Good evening and welcome. Tonight I'm going to be reading you this really cool book called An Illustrated History of Japan and it's by Shigeru Nishimura. It's got really cool wide pages so I'm really trying to get it all in the shot for you as much as I can. Are also by this author. Long ago, the earth was much colder than it is today. At that time, Japan was still part of the Asian mainland. People lived in caves and survived by hunting animals like elephants and giant deer. These people were the first to live in what is now Japan more than 100,000 years ago. Look at this. The Jomon era followed the Ice Ages. The Jomon era following the Ice Ages is when the islands that are now Japan emerged from the sea as world temperatures increased, the ice caps melted and sea levels rose. But Japan was still not a country. Illustrated here is a scene approximately 5,000 years ago. People began to live in villages. Food was abundant. People hunted wild animals, fished and gathered nuts and wild plants. They made tools from bones, horns, wood, soil, and stones. Jomon takes its name from the era's pottery, some of the earliest pottery made anywhere in the world. Let's see. The prehistoric Jomon era lasted for about 10,000 years. Villages flourished in both coastal and mountainous areas, but there were periods when food was very scarce. People performed ceremonies and prayed to gods for better times. The last part of the Jomon era overlaps with the next era when overseas settlers and invaders came to Japan. The new emerging social order became known as the Yayoi era and dates from almost 2,400 years ago. The Yayoi era lasted for approximately 600 years. Again, this era is named after its pottery. Approximately 2,000 years ago, the Jomon and the Yayoi peoples coexisted and traded with each other. During the subsequent Yayoi era, 300 BCE to 300 CE, more and more people from the Asian continent reached Japan by boat, and these settlers brought new skills, the growing of rice, the working of bronze and iron, and new religious practices. The new immigrants settled all over Japan, reclaiming swamps and growing rice. Japanese culture gradually changed, and Japan now became an agricultural society. About 1,900 years ago, the development of canal irrigation meant rice growing was no longer limited to lowland swamp areas. With bigger rice crops, village populations grew. Villagers cooperated with each other during storms to protect the rice crops, and they prayed together for good harvests. 
the men in charge of ceremonies and festivals that celebrated good harvests took senior positions in the village, and the village head served as both war chief and shaman. Rice is still very important to the Japanese today as their staple food. Toward the end of the Yayoi era, around 200 CE, social classes developed, and parts of the country began to unite under the sway of powerful landowners. Warfare, wealth, and differences in the size and strength of villages were seen. Villagers fought one another over water and land. The victorious villages governed the defeated ones. This is how small nations which ruled one plain or one river basin were born. As a result of many recurring battles, some villages secured control over large areas of the country. Ooh. During the Kofun era, from 300 to 700, Large mound tombs were used to bury emperors and high-ranking aristocrats or nobility. Kofun means old tomb in Japanese, and native Japanese laborers worked hard to build these gigantic tombs supervised by Chinese and Korean architects. Reminds me of my um, Kingdom of Kush video. From the 6th century onward, the elaborate use of large tombs began to fall out of use by the ruling elite as the result of new Buddhist religious beliefs, which did not approve of burial. However, in some areas, mound tombs were still constructed until the early 7th century. You know, in Buddhism, you're supposed to cremate. I read this. I wonder if it's in one of the books I'm going to read later. I believe it is. We'll talk about it later then. The Nara era began in 710 when the Japanese emperor founded a large capital city at Nara. During this period, foreign culture, art, and architecture arrived via the Silk Route the commercial trade route, which linked Japan to Europe and China in ancient times. The Buddhist religion became popular in Nara, and splendid temples were built by craftsmen and workers from the provincial areas. But the luxurious life of the emperor and the aristocrats came at a price. Heavy taxes and rice and labor needed to be paid by farmers. Looking at the palace walls out here, you can see the priests over here. The palace walls, and you can see the city. The countryside is so pretty. So much detail on these drawings. Oh wow! How beautiful. For this are not totally clear. The most likely reason was to reduce the influence of the Buddhist religion that had developed in Nara. This period is known as the Heian era, because at that time Kyoto was called Heian-kyo, the city of peace and tranquility. The power of the aristocratic families continued to grow, and life in the areas where they lived centered around their huge residences, lavish social gatherings, and colorful ceremonies. Ooh, festival. So much is happening. It's almost like a Where's Waldo picture. During the 
Heian era. All kinds of people lived in the capital of Heian-kyo. Merchants, craftsmen, robbers, and beggars. The city streets were crowded, and festive parades often took place along the major thoroughfares. The capital prospered, but life was uncertain for most people and was often short due to disasters and epidemics. A uniquely Japanese cultural identity now emerged, with the development of a written Japanese language and a new painting form, the picture scroll, where the picture and story unfolded as the viewer unrolled the scroll. Mm, big, big form. The importance and influence of the samurai warrior class grew during the Heian period. Samurai is the Japanese word for warrior and also means one who serves. The samurai were paid by powerful aristocrats to protect the land. Gradually they developed into private armies attached to local warlord aristocrats. They formed into units of samurais and developed a master and servant relationship with stronger samurais. They trained extensively and were equipped with arms, armor, and horses. At this time, the bow was the preferred battlefield weapon. Big long bow. Ooh. Fiery. Sunrise, sunset battle. Toward the end of the Heian period, two military clans, the Minamoto or Genji and the Taira or Heika, had grown so powerful that they seized control over the country and fought wars against one another for supremacy. Illustrated here is a bitter battle between the two clans. The Minamoto defeated the Taira, and in 1192, Minamoto Yoritomo became shogun, the highest military officer and ruler of Japan. He set up a military government at Kamakura, independent of the emperor, and he was the first shogun to rule Japan under military law. The Kamakura era from 1192 to 1333 was an age of shoguns or warlords and ruled by the militaristic samurai class. Japan was controlled by a series of military governments or shogunates for about 700 years after this. A prosperous merchant class also emerged at this time and with increasing trade more towns developed around seaports, important shrines, and temples. Illustrated here is a typical scene from this era. Bustling trade and the development of a riverside commercial town. The Muromachi era began in 1338 so named because the third shogun, Ashikaga Yoshimitsu, established his residence in the Muromachi area of Kyoto. At that time, village life centered around farming and the cultivation of rice. The rice paddy farms. Villagers cooperated with each other in the planting and harvesting of rice. They held meetings in the village shrine and decided amongst themselves what the local rulers would be, how to share things like water, and when and how to celebrate festivals. Uh-oh, fire. The Muromachi era, also known as the Ashikaga Shogunate, lasted from approximately 1336 to 1573. This period saw frequent rioting and a series of civil wars with people fighting for control of the land. 
when farmers were pressed to repay loans or to pay heavy taxes, riots and looting would erupt. Toward the end of the Muromachi era, riots seemed to break out nearly every year and had an impact on the power of the shogunate. As the Ashikaga shogunate declined in power, Japan entered an era of civil wars. Building a big wall. Looks like a big castle. And a village. During the last years of the Muromachi era, from 1467 to 1573, the daimyos, or regional lords, were free to do as they pleased without having to worry about a central government. They were the independent rulers of areas they controlled. Many battles were fought over land. Frequent fighting inspired the construction of large castles. Earlier castles were just places to retreat to during conflicts, but now they had living quarters. Farmers were ordered to build the castles. Castle towns developed with the castle at its core, and merchants and craftsmen with the or and, yeah, and merchants and craftsmen living just outside. I read it right. The Azumachi Moyama period from 1573 to 1603 marks the dominance of two shoguns, Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who built large castles at Azuchi and Momoyama. The first Europeans Portuguese and Spaniards arrived in Japan by sea in the 16th century, bringing Christian missionaries and gun traders with them. The advent of guns meant traditional warfare methods changed. Nobunaga encouraged trade with the foreigners, but his successor, Hideyoshi, feared the impact of Christianity. Under the rule of the Tokugawa family from 1603 to 1867, the capital moved to Edo, present-day Tokyo, while the emperor remained in Kyoto. Edo became the world's largest city. The Tokugawa family continued to hold power for nearly 250 years. Daimyos in the provinces had to regularly travel to and stay in Edo to demonstrate their loyalty to the shogun. Trade with all countries was cut off, except with China and Holland, who were only allowed to trade at the port of Nagasaki. The shogun wanted Japan to remain free from outside influences. During the Edo period, new farming techniques and new kinds of fertilizer increased the quantities of rice harvested, and other crops, such as cotton and rapeseed, were also introduced. There is now more regional differences as to what was grown, cotton being mainly grown around the city of Osaka. In some areas, an additional crop like rapeseed could be grown and harvested before the land was needed for rice. Illustrated here is rice being cultivated and harvested. Buckwheat was also grown and eaten in the form of noodles. Sounds good. Oh, there. Well, harvesting. During the 19th century, other industries also developed such as mining, forestry, and fishing. The Japanese have a long history of whaling, and from the 17th century, the technique of net whaling developed. Boats formed a semicircle around the targeted whale and drove it toward shore, where it became entangled in a large net. Using this method, 
about 150 whales were caught every year. But by the end of the 19th century, with the introduction of modern harpoon cannons, the catch increased tremendously. The Japanese use all parts of the whale. During the Edo era, the regional lords or daimyos had to travel to Edo regularly. So the road system improved and many inn towns developed, providing shelter for travelers. The roads were also used by merchants to transport commercial goods. The main road from Edo to Kyoto was the most important and busiest road during this time. Rice, paid as a tax, and other regional products were loaded onto river boats that sailed to the port at the mouth of the river, where they would be reloaded onto bigger boats and taken to Edo or Osaka. Edo was the world's largest city from the late 17th to the early 19th century, with a population of over one million people. Edo flourished as the political center of the Tokugawa shogunate. Half of its population were samurai, well, who were virtual bureaucrats, and half were engaged in commerce and industry. Osaka was Japan's most prosperous commercial city. In both cities, many shops lined the main streets, and cheaper apartment houses lined the narrow side streets behind the main streets, where servants, craftsmen, and poor peddlers lived. One million people in the early 19th century. Wealthy merchants in 19th century Edo and Osaka loaned money to the daimyos. And when the shogunate and the daimyos fell deeply in debt, more taxes were imposed on the farmers. This sparked revolts, and even some samurais attacked the shogunate. But the revolts were violently quelled, and rebellious farmers were severely punished. Japan was still a medieval, totalitarian military society, but it was becoming increasingly difficult to maintain the closed nation policy. Europeans were on Japan's doorsteps with strongholds in China and throughout Asia. closed-door policy had to be abandoned in 1853 when Commodore Matthew Perry arrived from America at the port of Shimoda at the southern end of Edo Bay and demanded the opening of Japan to foreign commerce. The shogun had no choice but to give foreigners access to the ports. Many historians consider Perry's arrival as a trigger that caused the downfall of the Edo shogunate. Eventually, after a period of civil war, the shogun stepped down, and in 1868, the emperor announced the official return of imperial power. This is known as the Meiji Restoration. During the Meiji Restoration, from 1868 to 1912, Emperor Meiji became the head of state, and the modernizing impact of Western influences and technology became very clear. Under the instruction of foreign experts, railways and modern communication systems such as the telegraph were built. The Takedo Railway was completed in 1889, which ran almost parallel the route of the Takedo Road. 
Western style buildings and traditional Japanese thatched wooden houses were built in the same areas. Even dress was affected and Western clothing became popular. Let's see, is anyone wearing Western clothing? He's not. <laughs> He's not really wearing any clothing. There we go, there's someone waiting for a train. Big old train. The factory. Big ships out. The water. The Meiji Emperor moved his residence from Kyoto to Edo, now renamed Tokyo, meaning Eastern Capital. By 1871, the daimyo domains had been surrendered and transformed into prefectures. Rapid modernization took place, including the development of a navy and army, railroads, factory, and steel production, and a parliament. The government wanted a strong military force, and conscription was introduced. After winning short wars against China and Russia, Japan emerged as an international military power. Emperor Taisho took the throne when the Meiji Emperor died in 1911. Japan entered World War I by declaring war on Germany. This era was a period of tremendous economic development, with the advent of radio broadcasting and the rapid increase in the numbers of buses and streetcars in Japanese city streets. But the Great Kanto Earthquake 1923 destroyed much of Tokyo, and most of the old Edo is now gone forever. The Taisho Emperor died in 1925. Looks like our In 1936, military leaders gained control of the government, and Japan signed a pact with Germany. Japan invaded China, and in December of 1941, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, and the United States entered World War II. Japan then went on to invade the South Pacific Islands and Southeast Asia. With America's entry into the war, it was only a matter of time before Japan was defeated and forced to withdraw from the lands it had conquered. Toward the end of the war, Japan, Japanese cities were firebombed and Tokyo was again destroyed. <laughs> the United States dropped two atomic bombs on Hiroshima on Nagasaki in August 1945, and the Japanese quickly surrendered, thus ending World War II. This was the first time that atomic bombs had been used in warfare. Soon after Japan surrendered, it was occupied by American, Australian, and Dutch forces. Japan's economy was shattered. Most cities were war-torn. People who had survived made rough and ready huts, tried to cultivate the war-ruined land. Black markets operated, and trains were heavily crowded with people looking for food. Look how full the train is. Sorry, I made the camera shake. We're building a building. Within 20 years after the end of World War, Japan was transformed into a great industrial nation by the hard work of its people. Industrial goods were mass-produced in factories and exported to world markets. Electrical equipment, such as TV sets and washing machines, began to be popularly used at home. A high-speed railway system and expressways were developed. 
prosperity increased and people's lives improved with the introduction of modern conveniences and cars, but at the same time pollution increased, endangering the environment. Modern day. Today there are over 125 million people living in Japan, creating the next chapter in the nation's history. Japan is the world's second biggest economy after the United States, and is a dynamic source of new ideas and new products. Japanese culture is spreading around the globe. The end. So much.